Hi, and welcome to episode 61 of my podcast all about knitting and crochet and my yarn shop here in Wiesbaden. I'm Kiko and today is August 3rd, 2020. The first thing I'm showing you today is this Haruni cowl and it's something you, you're probably quite familiar with if you have seen my podcast before because this, this is something that I only recently knit and uh, I think I showed the finished object last week. So this is really new but uh, I like it a lot and I'm very happy with the way it came out and how it sits um, on my shoulders and I think it's a very nice um, size. Um, I knitted a bit higher than the pattern called for, whoops, <laughs> like this, um, but that means um, if I don't need too much I can just roll it in like this or I can keep it hanging or um, if my head gets cold I can pull it up over my head like this and it's still long enough to go um, to cover my neck and um, yeah I'm really happy with it. So this is the Haruni, 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 I don't know how to say that in English, cowl pattern um, and um, I'll show another close-up of the beads because I think they're really pretty and I'm not quite sure how clearly they showed um, on screen um, if shown it a bit further back. So that's the um, today's accessory and the jacket I'm wearing is crocheted out of a ball of 100 Farbspiele yarn. I'll explain about the yarn in a minute. Just want to show you the jacket and it's this color gradient. Um, it start, started, I started with the yellow up here and then it slowly turned into this pink which fits perfectly with my dress, which is why I like wearing those two together. Um, the pattern is from a Simply Crochet uh, magazine from a few years ago. And um, yeah, I chose the pattern because you can crochet in one piece without having to um, cut the yarn anywhere. So you just stop crocheting the sleeves and then you keep going downwards and all I did is add a row of, I think it's called crap stitch, from the other end of the ball so that the pink shows a little on all the edges. And of course, at the lower edge, that's the color I stop with. 100 Farbspiele is a German designer. Um, no, she's a yarn manufacturer. I don't know if you would call her a yarn dyer. But what she was the first to um, make these gradients where you have several plies of yarn that are not plied. I uh, don't know how, to, how else to say that. So they run parallel and um, she switches out one of the threads. She changes the color for one of the threads one at a time. And that's how you get these um, gradients. And I just love the way she combines colors. Um, and this is... This one's a pastel rainbow and it's a very beautiful one and uh, maybe I will use it myself if nobody buys it um, sometime soon. Yeah and so that this was this jacket was made out of one of those balls and it has this very very nice and subtle color change which I like very much. Yeah so that's what I'm wearing today. I was wearing I just I don't um, yeah, put it on. If I get too warm, I'll take it off again, but I would really like to show it off a bit more. And I can pull this a bit away from my neck if it's a bit warmer like now, and if it gets colder, I can turn it a bit and then it'll be snug on my neck. Um, yeah, so I think if you look really closely, you can see the beads. They're a lot more visible in real life and I'm very happy I added them in. Okay, so on to finished objects. I have two finished objects this week. The first one are my spiral socks out of six ply sock yarn by Opal. Um, I, that was the first one I finished. This is the second one. And I'm sh just, in case somebody's watching who doesn't know how spiral socks work, you knit knit and purl stitches in a way the pattern spirals round um, the sock and you don't have to add in a heel 
and to show you that it still fits I will just pull it onto this wooden foot and you can see how just by um, pulling the sock on it just it stretches over the heel and it um, sort of pulls in on top of the leg on top of the foot and um, basically any foot size a shoe size can wear the sock because it doesn't matter whether the heel is of the person is here or here or here as long as there's enough cuff to hold the sock up um, you can wear the sock so and this is what the socks oops look like together uh, again I didn't um, try to match the colors I really enjoy um, for the colors to shift and to change and I also changed up the direction of the spiral don't know how uh, well you can see that but I think if you look closer you can see this spirals that way and this spirals this way and um, yeah just another little detail I enjoy so that was my first finished object and then the second one let me get rid of this um, the second one is the haramaki I was knitting for my aunt and I think I had already finished the knitting last week and I had to sew it together and I finished doing that and now finally you can see the way this contrast color spirals round and it doesn't go straight I did um, wash and block it quite aggressively when I finished sewing knitting and sewing it was quite narrow and very 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 long and I really pulled it apart and it did work out very nicely so that now um, worn as a cowl it'll sit loosely around the neck and it won't choke anyone um, I'll quickly show you but I'll have to take this off again so um, I just doubled it up so it's not too long and now it really sits nice and wide and again you can pull it down a bit if you want a bit more air and if it gets colder uh, you can just pull the ends in dif different directions and it'll pull more tightly around the neck and then my aunt can decide whether she wants the light blue to show more or she can uh, pull it around and then make the blue dark blue show more however she likes it and um, and also if she gets a cold head she can just pull it up and wear it like this and then she'll be warm all around and um, and I think that's the way she's probably going to wear it after blocking this is actually now too wide to work as a proper hat because what you're supposed to be doing with um, these haramakis is if you turn them around like this in the middle and you fold it in um, the top half over the bottom half um, this is supposed to make a hat but because I pulled it so aggressively it's too wide now it doesn't really fit even if, if I fold it over it's more like a helmet than a hat and it doesn't really fit so if you wanted to wear this as a hat what I could do is um, knit a bit of ribbing on the edge so that that pulls in but in my experience most people don't wear their haramaki as hats um, just as a hat but just pull it up um, from the neck and that way it's it's uh, it wears really nicely I did try it on as a belly warmer I do fit inside but only just that it's not that comfortable so I probably wouldn't wear it like that and I definitely know that my aunt is not going to wear it as a belly warmer because she wouldn't fit in <laughs> she's taller than me let's put it that way so that's my second finished object for the week uh, and on to works in progress um, I have done quite a bit of knitting and crocheting a lot of crocheting last week um, less knitting and there are several projects that I did not work on but uh, there are several new things uh, making an appearance so 
let me show you i'll start off with my socks as usual um i continued knitting on this spiraling sock that's not a spiral sock it's just a pattern that spirals like this and um, because of the pattern the way you knit it it breaks up the stripes of color and it creates those little squares uh, which i like a lot but i finally finished knitting the pattern and i've put in the heel which turned out to be exactly the gray bit which i liked a lot and now I'm just going to knit the foot in stockinette and I should be finished with this sock, hopefully soon. So that's the first sock. And then the other sock I'm knitting on is the neon shorty sock and I've finished the first one. So this is um, out of this beautiful book, 100, is it 101, one skein? uh sock yarn wonders something like that um i link to the book underneath the video if you're interested and it has this really nice lace pattern on top of the sock and i did not do the toe that was in the book but i just did the star toe that i usually knit because i was when i when i when i got round to knitting the toe i was just too tired to Look at the instructions and i just did the toe that i know and like um, so the first one is done and i started the second one haven't got really very far but i make it a point of always starting the second one once i finish the first one so i don't um, put it off for too long once it's started i will pick it up every now and then and knit a bit on it but if it's not started it's um I don't know, for some reason, I find it harder to, to um, get it started if I don't do it straight away, which I did this time. So this should get done at some point in time. That's the socks, only two pairs of socks now. I will probably start another pair fairly soon. Um, I am planning two pairs of socks that I want to give as as a gift for Christmas, I knit a, um, I always call them sock couple, sounds a bit nicer in German, um, every year for friends that I um, give socks to every Christmas. And this is the yarn that I have planned. And I always pick two different colors for them, but then knit the same pattern. And this year I decided to knit uh, Hermione's everyday sock. That's a fairly easy pattern but I like it and um, yeah so that's the plan for these and I'm still debating whether I should start another pair of spiral socks or maybe give it a break for a bit and do these socks first but um, yeah so that's the plan for the socks and as I'm going on holiday uh, at the end of the week for two weeks uh, it's important I have enough sock projects because that's one of my favorite things to carry around if I'm going places. Um, it's a small project that I can fit in any of my purses and I have something to knit while I'm going places and maybe if we take a break or sometimes even while I'm walking um, if it's something easy to knit. So that's the plan there. Um, then I crocheted as I said quite a bit and I did not crochet the pair of trousers the trouser skirts that I'm working on or what's it called split skirt whatever I didn't work on that um, but I'll show you the things that I did crochet on I added two more squares to the green granny blanket I'm working on I um, I'd done the nine at first and then I added these two. I did mean to add another one uh, to make it a rectangle, but I didn't get around to doing that. Um, yeah, so this is just a little green blanket using up all the green minis that I had left um, and using up some green leftover yarn by Opal. So these are all Opal yarns um, and that's just something that I can, it's also something that's nice to carry around because these 10 gram minis are so small and all I need is the 10 gram mini and a crochet hook and I have something to keep me busy for a while. So um, 
I'll probably take some of those um, on holiday with me so I can continue on that. Um, one thing I won't knit during my holiday is the Carnaby Crochet Long, the August um, issue of Simply Crochet uh, was released and I did the, um, the two squares that we um, got the pattern for this month. So that's those two. Um, I was hoping we'd get a bit more to do because there's only two more issues to come and we still have to crochet both the sleeves and one strip that is this width but like four times as long as one of those squares and everything needs to be assembled and sewn together. So I've been hoping that uh, some of the bigger parts would come as we're still waiting. If they put everything in the last, last issue, it's a bit... Um, it feels like now I have everything together and now I have to do that much work and before I had to wait and I couldn't do anything. I think it's, um, I don't know, I would have handled it differently if I had to um, decide when to publish what part of the pattern. But anyway, that's the two squares I did um, last week for this month and, uh, and I just brought the other little squares in that size that we've already done just to show you color wise these are my favorites um, yeah so that's the first pullover I'm crocheting from this pattern and then I'm crocheting another one out of cotton I haven't finished those squares but I'm pretty sure I'll be able to do them this week so that's why I won't take it um, on my holiday and after I've done the little two, two little um, cotton squares, I'll have to wait for September to come around. So that's that. Then I crocheted on the cat blanket. Cat lover's blanket is what the pattern is called. And I am crocheting one square every day. And these are last week's square squares. This is today's. And I'm not too sure about the order in which I crocheted them, but I'll just show you the new ones. I love this color combination. Some are very subtle, but that's actually two different shades of green. This is fairly subtle with a dark pink and a red. And another bright one. So these are the ones I crocheted last week. And these are the ones I crocheted in the weeks before. So the pile is growing. And I've, um, as I showed you last week, I'd already done the middle bits of all the squares. And I have also added the colors that I wanted to combine. So <clears throat> these three um, consists only of two colors so these will be cats and these have three colors so these will be just um, these round motifs that go into the blanket and these are the last five that I need to do once I finish those five um, squares I will have finished all the squares for the blanket and um, I'll be going on holiday <laughs> and I'm not going to take it with me because it's too many pieces and um, I have no idea in what order I want to sew the pieces together so I'll leave it here and maybe I'll decide I probably won't decide before my holiday how to sew them together um, I might try and crochet some eyes I've been meaning to do that for the last two weeks and didn't get around to doing it but maybe this week I can at least try and crochet one or two pairs of eyes to see what it looks like and how uh, much work they are and then um, after the holiday I'll sit down and decide how to add the pieces together then I'll have to sew everything together and I will also crochet a border around the blanket so there's still quite a bit of work coming my way but I'm really happy that I have been able to keep up with crocheting all the squares and um, enjoying the blanket a lot but that's not all the crochet I did last week. Um, I wanted to show you a book 
that I got as a gift from a good friend of mine. Uh, and she gifted me this rainbow crocheted blanket, which is a very beautiful book. Um, not quite sure if I've shown it before, but um, I have not started another blanket, even though I would love to. But what I decided to do is I wanted to just try out some of the patterns and see how they work up and how um, what they look like if I use a different yarn. And I started with the very first blanket. It's called Crop Circles. And this is the blanket in the book. And I crocheted it out of um, sock yarn. She uses fingering yarn, so the size is about the same. But um, because I work so much with opal yarn that's um, colorful in itself, I did not use um, just the single color yarns. Um, and what she does is she uses a different color for every round of her motif. But I just used a colorful yarn, did all the rounds that were supposed to be colorful in that one yarn, and then um, did the border in a single color and then the thing about this blanket is that you can do um, different numbers of rounds in different colors and then all the rest is crocheted in the main color so this are these are this one has six rounds of color and then um, the border or the main color these two have five rounds of color and this one only has four rounds of color and um, I did it the way she describes it in the book that once I finished the second square I um, crocheted them together before I cut off the yarn and then I did that with all the other squares as well and um, if I if I knit uh, if I crochet the blanket as it is written in the book I would make this strip nine squares ten squares long and then I would do nine of them and crochet them all together and then I would add more um, squares to the outside of what I've done already um, but it's, this is not really the beginning of a blanket it's just a um, it's like a gauge swatch I guess just to try out the pattern just to see how it works up um, yeah and so far I like it a lot so these two are the same ball of yarn so it, even though they look quite different um, because I use different parts of the ball, um, yeah, that's quite interesting. And this is a Voldacke yarn. Um, I think it's the, it's either the unicorn or the rainbow colorway. I think it's the rainbow colorway. Um, and it's, it's a hand dyed yarn. So the look is quite different from the opal yarns that have more, um, that have longer, parts in the same color and this just changes the color all the time but I think it looks really really nice um, yeah so this is just um, it's it's it doesn't have a project page on Ravelry because I'm not really calling the project it's still only only a gauge swatch but um, I enjoyed doing it I like the result and maybe I'll do a whole blanket in that pattern someday um, yeah but until I seriously start crocheting the blanket there won't be a project page but I still wanted to show you and then I started something else um, which was a sort of very spontaneous idea and it's from this book rustic modern crochet and um, I used the same pattern that I have used before but I have never finished the project so if you watched my German unfinished objects video you will have seen the pattern before and the thing is that the original is this big loose west vest uh, that's made up of four of those huge squares um, here you can see the pattern more clearly and uh, what I did I think two years ago I started crocheting the same motifs in a lace yarn and my plan was to do four squares for the front and four squares for the back and have a very small like a waistcoat or something or, or tiny sleeveless jacket um, 
but and I finished five of those motifs and I still need to crochet three more and I haven't worked on it for years so maybe someday I will but last week I um, was um, I would would have liked to have something white or white gray to uh, wear with a black dress and I didn't have anything the way I wanted so I tried to do the same um, pattern with th three strands of cotton yarn so I thought if I have three strands of cotton yarn I should probably get the same gauge as um, in the original which is crocheted with a um, hook uh, seven or nine millimeter she used a seven millimeter hook so I thought if I use three strands of cotton yarn, it might look nice and I might be able to finish it in just two days. That's the time I had before I needed, um, needed to wear it. But after I did uh, two or three rounds, I realized it was just too big and too heavy because the, um, the original in the book, it's um, I think it's a mix of different materials, but it's more wool. Um, oh no, it's acrylic. Okay, but it, even acrylic is a lot lighter than, than cotton. So with cotton, it was just too heavy and too bulky looking and I didn't like it. So I um, ripped it out. But then I started doing the same thing with two strands of yarn. So what I did is I used this um, Catania uh, Glamour with a, with a glittery bit, with a sparkle. And I held the white and the light gray together and I crochet the same motive and I really like it. It's still fairly bulky for being a cotton yarn, but it's not too bulky and not too heavy. And these are the first five rounds. So it's about one, two, three, four, five. So maybe it's this bit that I've crocheted so far. And I thought if I do the whole, square because it starts off round and then it squares off if i do the whole square it should be big enough to be the front or the back of a for it of a top for myself so that's what i'm aiming at i want to finish um the square and then hopefully this will be one side of a top and i'll just crochet the same thing again attach um the top bits uh over the shoulder and then um join the the sides the, the bottom part of the side so I still have um, holes for the for my arms and then um, that be a really simple easy to do top crochet top and um, with the white and light gray I could wear it basically over every dress I have whether it's this pink one or um, a black one or whatever um, yeah but it I, I really liked it, but there was no way I was going to finish it in two days. So I stopped crocheting on this and I'll just finish it at some point. <laughs> Hopefully it won't take too long so I can still wear it this summer. So um, I think that was all the crochet I did last week. Then on to some knitting. I did not work on my memories blanket and I did not knit on the square, uh, the blue square that I uh, want to make into a kind of shrug thing. But I did continue knitting on my sleeves by Martina Beam. And that's that. Um, I had started, I'd finished the, this garter triangle last week and I think I'd already joined it to, um, to knit in the round. And I did 20 rounds of stockinette in the same color that I used for the garter stitch bit. And then I changed colors and uh, I haven't done too much with the new color. So the new color is this gray um, color. This is both opal sock yarn with cotton. And my plan is to do another 20 rows with the gray and then maybe I'll decide that the sleeve is long enough, then I can start with the second sleeve or I can go on with the instructions. I have to see uh, how to continue from there. I don't want the sleeves to be really long. Um, my main concern is to have 
um, something on my upper arms because they get cold when I ride my bike. Yeah, so this is very easy to do. Um, probably something I can knit while I'm in the car when we're going places. So that's the sleeves and um, I did a little knitting on my snowflake pullover out of this beautiful Opal Abo yarn, subscription yarn. Um, and I, uh, which was the first sleeve that I knit? I think that was the first sleeve. I think that was, the, I don't know. Anyway, I have two sleeves now. <laughs> Because I finished the um, the spiral socks, my needle was free to do the second sleeve, and now I have both sleeves, and I'm very happy that the colors um, do not line up because I like to have the colors be different. Um, so yeah, I really enjoy how that came out. Now I um, need to continue knitting the front and back. Um, I did some waist decreases before the, yarn, the ball of yarn was uh, ran out and I will probably have to do some hip increases soon and then I will probably start with the pattern fairly soon because I don't want the pullover to be too long and I want to fit the pattern on top of the ribbing and um, yeah, but there's still some measure measuring and deciding to do. So uh, yeah, no idea how quick I will be in doing that. And um, if I get round to knitting the increases and, and making the decisions on where to put the color work before we go away, I might take it with me if I just need to finish the knitting and then maybe I'll have a finished pullover when I come back, but maybe not. We'll see. So that's a pullover and then I started two more, two new projects. So two new cast -ons. Um No, one of them is a cast on, the other one is just um, a gauge swatch again. I'll start with that. Um, and that's something quite different from what I usually do. Uh, most of the time I use fairly thin yarn because I do so much with sock yarn even if it's six ply or eight ply it's not that big a yarn but this time I chose this cotton yarn by Schachenmeyer it's called cotton jersey and it's 70% cotton and 30% um, polyamid and I am knitting a like a kind of poncho um, yeah for someone who wanted to have something in this color. And this is just a gauge swatch, trying out a few patterns. And what I need to do now is make a picture and send it to her and ask her whether she would prefer a textured pattern like this or a lace pattern like that, or maybe something completely different. And then when once we decide on the pattern, it'll be a fairly easy thing to do, just two rectangles and, um, and then a collar and I don't know, I have to see how I do the edging, whether I um, knit it while I go, which is what I would prefer. But um, yeah, I haven't quite decided on how to, do, how to do that. But I hope to get all this organized this week so um, that I can take that with me on holiday and work, work on that during that time. Um, I use these wooden needles um, for the gauge swatch because they, they look nice and I like the feel of it, but I'm not going to use the straight ones to um, to knit the whole piece because then it'll just get too heavy on one hand or the other hand uh, because, um, yeah, because if you have those two needles, whenever you start or finish a row, you have m almost all the stitches on one needle and I don't know, I, I feel it's more work to knit like that and I prefer to have it on a circular needle because then it feels like the weight is distributed more. Um, like more in the middle, it's easier to work with. That's what I think. Anyway, 
So that's that. And then the last project I'm going to show you today is um, the Gemini pullover that we're going to do as a knit along. So I said the official start was um, August 1st and I started knitting a little earlier because I did a video showing you how to do the beginning of the pullover. Um, unfortunately, we did not get round to um, 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 working on the video and releasing it yet. So maybe we'll manage to do that today. Um, but sometime this week at the latest. Um, oh, but it'll be only in German because it's an English pattern. I think if you speak English, it shouldn't be a problem to, to knit the pattern. It's a free pattern on knitty.com. Um, you find the link underneath the video and um, but for Germans who do not understand English I just um, I promise to make a video and explain what things mean and how things are worked and that's what I did just need to upload it uh, or um, yeah needs to be cut and uh, worked on my husband does that so I don't have to bother about that um, Okay, so this is my cast on. Haven't done too much yet. Um, this is the side without the pattern. That's where the beginning of the round is. And then both sleeves and the other part, front or back, have this simple, nice lace pattern with really big holes because you do two yarn overs um, next to each other and um, and these are the raglan increases these are the only things where you have to pay attention because they are not the same every round but you have um, five rounds of increases that are explained and then you repeat them so it's not too difficult in every other round you just knit all the stitches except for the second yarn over that needs to be purled um, yeah, and I'm using this beautiful cotton by Schachenmeier and um, yeah, I'm happy with how it looks so far and I'll keep knitting on it. I will, um, I might finish knitting the yoke while I'm on holiday, but once the yoke is done and the stitches are being separated for the sleeves, I want to make another video so I won't be able to do that on holiday and then I'll have to put it to the side um, until I can do the video and then I can finish the pullover. Yeah, so that's everything. I knit and crocheted last week. As I said, I'm going on holiday at the end of the week, so there won't be a video the next two Mondays. And then we come back from our holiday on the, mon on the Monday after. Um, but I will try and sit down and record a video on that day to show you everything I knit and crochet during my holiday. Um, I will take quite a few projects with me, but I will try not to crochet and knit all the time because I've been having troubles with my hands and fingers and with pains. Um, so I will try and take a holiday from knitting and crocheting a bit. Um, I don't want to do without completely, but um, I will try and do a little less. Um, so. We'll see how much there is to show in three weeks time. I hope you enjoyed this episode and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.